everyone. Today, I'd like to talk about Pop OS. Pop OS was developed by System76, and that's a company that has their own line of laptops and desktops, mini configuration form factors, and servers. You can actually buy their devices, like here you have laptops, and they come pre-installed and configured with Pop OS. You don't even have to install your own OS if you don't want to. They have all kinds of things and desktops and they're all optimized just for pop os that's pretty cool and what's also cool is you don't have to have it on their system of course you can simply download an iso and put it on your own system so let's take a quick look at some of these features one of the reasons i was kind of intrigued about pop os wanting to take a look at this is because over the years I've noticed that there's quite a fan base with Pop and it seems to have a reputation for being really friendly for new users. So I want to kind of check that out and see how friendly it is. I think it's based on Ubuntu if I remember right or some type of Debian. And so I would assume that it's probably pretty stable. I'm not really quite sure what the desktop is so we'll just pop in and find out. Looks like it's got auto tiling with Pop Shell. That's pretty cool. Workspaces, keyboard navigation, stacking. Nice, okay. We'll have to check that out. And then all kinds of development tools here that are available. Don't know if they're pre-installed or not, so we'll find out. And then of course they go on to tell you about a little bit about the System76 hardware that is optimized for the system or vice versa. <laughs> So that's very cool. And there you have your mini form factor. That looks really interesting. Laptop, encryption out of the box. So it looks like it's got pre-installed full disk encryption right out of the box. Hmm, okay. Curious to see if that's optional or not. Firmware management, updates. All right, that's super. And it looks like it's got all the familiar tools in there. Gaming, hybrid, dark mode. Very good. So let's take a look. I'm going to go up here and click this big download button. And here it looks like we got a little pop-up. And you have a choice here. Pop OS 2010 and then the LTS version if you want an older kernel. I'm going to stick with this. And it looks like it may have an auto detect here whether you need the regular download or the nvidia that's kind of nice that they have a separate support for nvidia gpus because nvidia drivers can be a real pain in the butt on some distros <laughs> getting those right if you have certain nvidia cards which i don't so that's a good thing for me i'm going to go ahead and click download and then i'm going to go ahead and download this to my hard drive and then I'll be right back when I load it into vert manager okay I'm in my vert manager now and no menu or anything it's just flying right into the startup wow that's kind of cool actually so it's getting right to the point so I think we should be in our desktop anytime now and here we are we got the pop wallpaper and everything came right up so that was pretty quick, no fooling around. I'm gonna go ahead and my display settings real quick. And I'm gonna beef up the resolution here to something more palatable. Okay, that's way better. So let's take a look at this. So here we have our desktop background with kind of a cool pop wallpaper and then we have this up on top, activities. This looks like it's GNOME, so they're apparently using the GNOME desktop. All right, so let's go ahead and run this installer. Going to go ahead and go with the defaults. And these are all good. Going to go with the clean install. I don't really need to do anything customized like partitioning or anything because I'm just in my virtual machine. So I'm going to go ahead and hit clean and select my hard drive here. We'll go with erase and install. Okay, here's where it's asking for your 
options for encryption. I think I'm just going to go with don't encrypt. Otherwise, you would click choose password. Okay, wow. All right, after that, it's extracting files already. Cool. So I went straight into the install. I'm assuming that the other things like creating a user and all that must be at the end of the install. So I'll let it do its thing. I'll pause the video and I'll be right back when it's completed. Okay, it looks like our install is complete. That didn't take long, just a couple minutes. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit restart device and let's see what happens. Okay, really snappy, it's moving fast. Wow. So this ought to only take a few minutes or a few minutes, it shouldn't take long at all. And just wanted to remind you that the image on here wasn't real huge, uh, about 2.2 gigs, if I remember right, looking at the download screen. And it even had a link to how you could burn your ISOs from different OSs. So I kind of forgot to point that out before. All right, now we're back into our desktop and looks like it's installed. And here's the welcome screen. All right, I was thinking that this should be next. Nice looking welcome. Let's hit next. And Cameroon, that's correct? Not really. <laughs> Let's see, English, yes. So we're good there. Let's just go ahead and hit next. Uh, allows geographical locations, that's okay. That's probably like for a weather app or something. Time zone is good. Connect your online accounts. So if you have online accounts, it uh, makes it real easy to get connected here. So that's kind of cool. Gonna go ahead and skip that. Then we'll give it a name. Hmm, let's see. Something simple like Lucy McGillicuddy. <laughs> How about the usual, Toadwick? Okay, and then we, it's gonna ask us a few details like a password. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And it says it's weak, but that's okay. I think on a VM we're good <laughs> for demo reasons. All right, and that's it. So let's go ahead and hit start. And it should pop us into our Pop! OS desktop. And really a very quick install. Overall, I think this whole process, including what I just did, maybe five or six minutes, not bad. That's impressive all on its own. I'm gonna go ahead and right click and select display settings and get back up to a 1920 by 1080 again. So let me just scroll down here and do that, apply and keep. All right, much better. So let's explore this baby. So right off the bat, I can tell that it's a GNOME desktop and we click activities. We have our taskbar over here and then our main menu, and it's showing our desktop that's currently active over on the right side. So here's our menu, and it's got the no menu in here, which is always kind of cool. I always kind of like their menu. And so this is what's in here by default. Looks like it's pretty light right from the start here. We got our calculator, calendar, contacts, our file browser, uh, Firefox by default, Geary, which I think is an email client. Hmm, interesting. Office, which looks like it's got LibreOffice installed. We got our Pop Shop, Settings, System, Terminal, Text Editor, Weather, and Utilities. Yes, nice. So let's take a quick look at Firefox. Just kind of curious to see what the current version is. The most current version is 86. So let's see how current it is. 85.01, so almost the latest. It's close enough, I guess. And yes, this is really feeling zippy. Someone told me that. In fact, Hannah Gomez, right. She's the one that turned me on to actually trying this out because I messed with Pop! OS probably five years ago, maybe. It was a long time ago. 
and I thought it was kind of cool, but it's really come a long ways since then. And I never really gave it a shot. And lately I've been hearing a lot about Pop! OS, a lot of chatter out there, you know, regarding Pop! OS. And then when Hannah came by and left her great comment, that made me think, you know what? I really got to take another look at this. So back on topic. So we got our browser up here and I'm just gonna jump out of that real quick. I notice it's only got an X up there, no minimize thingy. Hmm. That's different. Let's click on menu bar and we can bring up a menu if you like the more traditional look. Uh, I'm just gonna close this for now. For being beginner friendly though, that's kind of strange that you wouldn't have your minimize thingies up there. <laughs> Doesn't really bother me, but you know. Hmm. So I'm gonna go ahead and close that. Let's take a look at the wallpaper, see what that's available. Right now it looks like it's got the pop wallpaper in there the big P. Um, kind of makes me wonder how they came up with that name, Pop OS. Probably the guy was sitting there that developed it and he was sitting there with a big smile on his face and his son came walking over and said, Gee, Pop, what you doing? And he probably said, Why, I just completed my own Linux distro and it's really cool. I'm just trying to think of a name for it. Wow, that's well, Pop. Wait, say that again. That again. No, no, what you said before that. No, no, what you said before that. Oh, I'll call it Pop. And thus, Pop was born. No, okay, I'm messing with you. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and right click and change background. Let's see what we got available in our wallpapers. Wow, some cool looking things here. Some planets, or actually the phases of the moon. And that's a kind of a cool background. Uh, satellite dish. Oh, that's even cooler. Wow, that really works nice with a dark theme. I like that. I might use that one. And so many cool choices. Moonscape, nice earth. night a nebula looks like wow that's uh so cool jellyfish nice animated desktops yeah really cool i mean it looks like there's a big variety here that would suit a lot of different tastes quite a few um personally i like desktops that are fairly simple without a lot of clutter of course, you know, a GNOME, it doesn't really matter that much because on a GNOME desktop, you can't use desktop icons anyway. So there's nothing that's going to clutter the desktop. Um, and so, yeah, when I hear pop being beginner friendly, I guess that kind of depends on where you're coming from because if you're a Windows user, you're going to be used to this taskbar being at the bottom. And so if you really have to have a Windows type setup, when you click on activities, you definitely wouldn't see this in Windows. So that would be a little bit of an adjustment for a Windows user. For some people, that probably wouldn't be a problem at all. For others, maybe it would. If you're coming over from Windows, you'd probably be more comfortable like in a Cinnamon desktop. Uh, that's very Windows-like. Uh, actually, KDE is kind of would be comfortable too. A Plasma desktop for a Windows user coming over. I guess if I was a Mac user, it probably wouldn't be that much either, really. That Mac user would probably adjust quicker. I'm not sure as far as uh, the aesthetics go, if that would be friendly for a, user, a beginner. I guess it depends on the mindset. <laughs> but I would think this would be very stable and easy to work with. My advice, if you're going to use the GNOME desktop, like uh, what we have here, is just don't ever frick with it. Just leave the GNOME desktop the way it is. In fact, I wouldn't even use the extensions to try to modify it to look different, to put your top bar on the bottom or whatever, because those extensions tend to break every time GNOME does an update to GNOME. 
So that can actually be kind of frustrating. They do have extensions where you can put icons on your desktop or allow you to move your top bar here to the bottom. I think it's called dash to, dash to dock, if I remember right. And so you can kind of switch things around using extensions. But again, like I said, extensions tends to break. And in my opinion, I think the GNOME developers probably intentionally make those extensions break because they probably don't want people using extensions. They just want you to use it exactly the way it is. So my advice is, if you want to use GNOME, just use it the way it is and accept it the way it is. Accept the fact that you're not going to have icons on the desktop. And you may find that after a while, you really like it with no icons on the desktop. And you'll find it a cleaner experience. I've seen Windows users that have icons filled their whole screen everywhere. It's just a blanket of icons. And it's like, how do you, how do you find stuff? <laughs> so really, you just got to change your perspective. You know, just use it the way it is and you will be a happy GNOME user. So let's explore a little bit. Let's go into our menus and let's open up our terminal and take a look at this. I just want to see right now, let's see if HTOP is installed for one thing. And it's not, so let's go ahead and install it. I'd like to see what the resources are, usage on this, just kind of run by itself. So let's see, this is, uh, should be apt sudo apt install htop okay very quick and let's run htop and it looks like we're running just over a gig of ram barely almost 1.1 and i would say for gnome that's not too bad actually because gnome does have a little bit of overhead and that's that's pretty good so I would not complain too much about that and again the feel has been very snappy so all right so we'll pop out of HTOP real quick and just do a control C the F10 didn't work I think it's probably a different okay so let's check some other things out let's look at our file manager and one thing, yeah, I, I didn't notice until just now is the dark theme seems to be enabled by default. And that's kind of cool. A lot of times I don't really like the dark theme because you get things that just don't work real well with it. Like the fonts sometimes are too dull and they blend into the black and so forth. But this is looking like it's working really well. The way it's themed out and everything seems to really look good with the dark theme. I like this color scheme too with the sky blue over here and the, the blue icons. And these icons are really kind of cool looking too. I like the icons. Overall, it's got a really great look. And our file manager is files. So that's pretty cool. So overall, the aesthetics I think are really great so far. And let's see what we got up here. Oh, we got a Windows Tiler. That's really cool. And we got exceptions here. Launcher. All right, let's explore some of this. Uh, right now we're in floating Windows mode, which is pretty standard on most desktops by default. Floating Windows simply means that we got Windows here that we can put anywhere. And this window might be up here and this one's overlapping. and. You get the picture. Now if we hit this tiling windows, then what it's going to do is it's going to split our desktop up the space and keep both windows showing, which is kind of cool. And then if we opened up some more windows, like uh, if I came in here and I don't know, opened up another app like, uh, oh, let's say, let's say our pop shop, because we're going to check that out anyways. We got to tile down here and now they're all kind of available and as we open up more things then they get smaller as you go so like if I opened up say 
maybe our calculator. Okay, and so now we got everything kind of tiled in here. And then you can see the windows are kind of resizing as we go. And if I close something like this guy, the other windows will get bigger. And then if I close, say, this guy, they get even bigger. But wow, the calculator is getting massive now. So we have this and we got this. And now we also have up here exceptions. So if you don't want certain things to tile for whatever reason, then you can add those to an exception list. So for example, if you don't like the calculator being really massive like this, you can go up here and add it to an exception. And here you can see it's add exceptions by selecting currently running applications and windows. So if I hit select here and then select the calculator, and then say this app's windows, then every time you run the calculator, it won't tile. So now it just kind of floats in front of the remaining App Store app here. And so anything that you want to keep floating, you can put in an exception. And so now you see we have our tiling windows here for our file manager and our App Store app here. But our calculator is floating somewhere. <laughs> in the background. So how can we see that? Well, check out our shortcuts here. This is kind of cool. If we bring this up, we can kind of look at our short shortcut sheet sheet. And if we want to navigate applications in Windows, we would just hit our super slash. So hit super and slash. And then we can see a list of our all our things we have open and there's our calculator. So we can just select it and there it is. So how cool is that? That's really a nice feature. I like that. I think I could get used to that. And it's kind of handy having these keyboard shortcuts here. That's pretty cool. And here you can switch your focus between windows, of course, by using your super and arrow keys. Oh yeah, another cool thing is, uh, what do they call that? Um, I think there's a shortcut key up here. <laughs> Let's see, there's another feature that lets you tab. And they have a name for it. Actually, I got to look in the shortcut thing here to refresh my memory. Uh, stacking mode, that's what they call it. So they have stacking mode. And this mode is only available when you're in tiling mode like we are now. If you're in floating windows, then it won't work. But while you're in tiling mode, you can actually stack these into tabs. So for example, if I wanted all these tabbed in together, I could take this shortcut thingy here if I wanted to for some strange reason and just kind of put it on top of this guy like that and then there we go so you got to kind of find that little sweet spot and I don't do this very often so <laughs> uh, it's not as intuitive for me but I, I guess you would just kind of bring it and just kind of Make sure the width of the window covers the width of the one underneath it and then let go. And that didn't work, did it? So let me try that again. Like I said, you kind of got to get the feel for it. Okay, so let me just kind of put that up right just over touching the yellow thingy there. So let's just try this. Yoink. <laughs> yeah, so it's kind of hard to get right. Maybe we just got to have it so it shows like this, where it's yellow all the way across. Nope. How about if we did it like this way? There we go. And now it got in there. So yeah, you can tell I'm not an expert at getting these uh, stacking features in but now we got them together and so it's really cool because we have our pop shop over here and then tab over here to our keyboard shortcuts and tab over here to our file manager well, that's really cool I mean that's another feature that I really like I think that's really neat and you might be asking where's the calculator well remember we hit our super and slash key and then we can choose the calculator but the calculator won't go up in there because it's 
an exception. It's a floating window, so it's not part of the tiling. So you can't really tab this guy in unless you took out the exception and made it a tiling window again. So you want to keep that in mind if you have any exceptions there. So yeah, that's really cool. And so then we got these other features in here, you know, like your active hint color, which right now is this uh, kind of a uh, off yellow and so forth. These are the gaps between our windows, which you can't see them right now because we're stacked. Very nice. That's a really good feature. And then over here, you got all three of your controls here, your volume, network settings, and then your main settings, and then log out and lock the screen. Let's go into our settings real quick and just kind of see what we got here. So now we're in our settings. It's really all your standard GNOME settings here. So we got our network up here, our Bluetooth appearance where we were before when we set our background, and then our appearance tab, which is where we can alternate between dark and light mode. So we can go here in light mode and then we have our light background. And so if I wanted to look at my file manager, for example, we have our light background. Yet yeah, the menu up here is still dark, which I really like. That's nice. So that's very cool. So back in our settings for a light background, you can still have a nice dark top bar there. Just out of curiosity though, in light mode, how about how does the menu look? Yeah, we still have our dark background in the menu. So to me, that's perfect. I really like that because when I use light mode, I just like having light mode for seeing my backgrounds, for example, in my file manager. And sometimes applications look better when they're in light mode. For some reason, they look kind of crappy when you have dark mode on. So that's another reason I like having light mode, but I always like having my menus dark and my top bar or task bar, your panel, depending on where you're at. <laughs> I like that dark too. So that's a really cool thing. Excellent. And I'll just go back to dark for darkness reasons. <laughs> then our notifications, these are all pretty standard applications, such as our archive manager, all these different settings for our different applications that are installed right now. So that's cool. Ah, extension manager. I'm kind of surprised that's in there. And it looks like the notification extension is the only one in there. Uh, it's not really shown any way to install the extensions. You probably need GNOME Tweak installed for that. And they don't have that in there probably because they don't want you messing with it. And like I said earlier, you'll be a lot happier in GNOME if you just leave it alone and don't mess with the extensions. I think for most people, you would be happier. There's our input device and it's even picking me up talking. I'm impressed. <laughs> we have our power, our display settings where we were before, uh, night light mode. So if you want to kind of make it more warm for nighttime, here's where you can do that. Take some of the blue out of your color temperature or you can put it in depending on where you adjust it. So that's a nice feature especially if you have trouble dimming your screen for some reason, depending on your hardware, your screen might not dim and it might be on full brightness all the time. And so this is kind of a way to get around it. You can turn on your night light and just kind of put it in a warm setting and it will dim your screen. So that's something to kind of keep in mind. And then your mouse settings, keyboard, printers, some of these don't really apply to me right now because I'm in a VM. So like, colors and some of your other things like here is not going to apply because of my monitor and so yes and then our user settings here's where you can set your picture if you want you can go in and modify the username and all that good stuff it's all fun and here you can give yourself a picture like a putty tat <laughs> nice default applications your date and time if you need to change that around and you can set it for 24 hour if you like, if you prefer that over your AM PM. And then we have our about and here it gives all our information about our setup, which again, I'm in a virtual machine, so it's shown KVM. And then here, if you need to check for an upgrade, but 
That's kind of redundant because it already does automatically check for updates by default in your settings. You're all good there. And that kind of covers it. Why don't I just jump out of tiling mode real quick? Just to kind of, for some of you that might be more comfortable with floating windows. Our taskbar, I guess I didn't give that a lot of attention, but here's where you get easy access to your pop shop, your terminal, files, and web browser. And you can add things to that too. So for example, if you went in here and maybe you were a nut about the text editor, <laughs> then, and you wanted to have easy access to this all the time, you can just go over to activities and then you can see that your text editor is open here in your panel. You can simply right click over that and select add to favorites. And now if we close this guy, it stays in your panel. So that way it's there every time you need it. So you're good to go. And so easy peasy to add something into your panel. So now my opinion, well, Pop! OS is a really nice, comfortable environment. And I'm not really a GNOME fan overall, but if I had to use this desktop environment, I think I'd be pretty comfortable because I would just tune my mindset to say that we're gonna leave it the way it is. And I don't think that's a big stretch for a lot of people. I mean, especially Windows users. When you buy a Windows machine, people don't go and modify it that much. Most people anyway don't really change the environment around. They don't switch the taskbar to another part of the window. Most people, you know, some people do, but a lot of people don't get in there and mess with it too much with as far as modifying things. And they just accept it the way it is. And with GNOME, you got to kind of do the same thing. Just accept it the way it is. Don't mess with the extensions. It'll give you headaches over time. Well, not right away. You'll like them at first, but in time, they'll start being a headache because they'll break on you. So just keep it the way it is and you'll love it. I think Pop! OS, I would say is probably really stable. I'd have to use it for a while, but being that it's uh, Ubuntu Debian based, it's pretty stable. You'll notice that Firefox is not the absolute latest. It's almost the latest. They are gonna test things for bugs and stability before they actually bring it into an update on Pop! OS. So there's a reason that it's not going to come out that you're not always going to see that very cutting edge stuff right off the bat. And that's a good thing for most situations. For me, the only things I would have to get used to are, you know, little things like, for example, let me open up Firefox again and see how snappy that was. Pretty responsive, even in a virtual environment. But if I want to minimize the window, yeah, as a new user coming into this environment, I don't really know how to minimize it. I can't really. <laughs> it's just kind of there. For me, if I was a new user, that would be kind of funky, but not a deal killer, just kind of weird. For something like this, I could simply right click on it and minimize it. But then I got to remember the sh keyboard shortcut, which is super slash so I can find it and open it back up again. Otherwise, I would want to be in tiling windows mode and then that way I'm not losing things. So that would kind of be my only little meh, you know, if I was a new guy. So that is just something that one would have to acclimate to. For some, no big deal. For others, eh, it might be kind of rough. For me, that would probably be the only quirk that would take some getting used to, but a minor trade-off for having stability, a nice environment, an easy workflow to get around, a really nice menu, quick access to your bar here. And I always like these full screen menus. Again, that's a matter of taste. Some people love them, some people don't, but I think they're really cool. Even in KDE, a lot of times I'll run the full screen menu alternative to the regular one. So overall, it does get my seal of approval and something I would have no trouble running at all. I think as with any spin of Linux, with your different desktop environments, the beauty is that you have so many different desktop environments that you have lots of choices. So depending on your taste and where your comfort area is, 
you can always go there. And even in Pop! OS, really, there's nothing to stop you from installing alternative desktops on this. Although, unless you're really good at what you do, I probably wouldn't. <laughs> Just my personal advice. But, yes, Pop! OS definitely gets my seal of approval. And I can really understand the appeal with Pop! OS. It is really nicely put together, a very well done distro and something that I can tell has a lot of work put into it and probably has a pretty good backing given that they have the System76 company there with all the hardware. And I bet that would be really interesting to see some of their desktops and laptops and so forth with the Pop! OS on it. And that's something I haven't seen personally, but to have that pre-installed on equipment that's really kind of optimized for the environment or vice versa, I think would be really interesting and something that even in schools, I think it would be a fantastic thing to have where you have your students with maybe school labs with laptops running a System76 equipment with the Pop! OS on it. And the kids would just probably eat that right up. And at the same time, the IT directors that are in the schools would have a whole lot less headaches because they wouldn't be dealing with spyware all the time. And it would be a whole lot nicer to administer. So that's another environment that I could picture Pop! OS and the System76 equipment being a real winner. So with that, I think that's going to cover my review. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave me that thumbs up. And if you're not already, hit that subscribe button. I would love to have you. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.